observations of the planets himself, and he discovered the law of gravity. But the planets move very slowly, <coughs> at least compared with the speed of light. So the gravitational waves they produce have very, very long wavelengths, light years. Wavelength is much bigger than the solar system. The experiment with the rope shows this. The gravity in the solar system should exhibit very little evidence of these gravitational waves. If the rope is too short, you just don't see the wave. Therefore, Newton knew nothing about gravitational waves. His theory didn't need them, and he didn't include them. Today, we know about cosmic objects that move very fast indeed. For example, black holes and neutron stars in orbits very close to one another. We require a theory of gravity in which waves have their proper place. And that's Einstein's general theory of relativity. Remarkably, the French physicist Laplace speculated about gravitational waves around the year 1800. He believed gravity had to have a finite speed, and he understood that this would lead to waves. But it took another century before Einstein could make a full theory of gravity that had the waves. And this film coming shows what they are like. Gravitational waves stretch and squeeze space as they fly through the universe. They change the distances between points in space. Our laser interferometers measure the tiny changes in length that they create. Gravitational waves affect all objects because they affect space itself. A given gravitational wave always produces the same change in shape, no matter how big or small the system. Therefore, we build the biggest possible detectors so that the stretching is as large as possible and therefore easier to measure. But even so, the stretching remains very, very small. Measuring it is a huge technological and scientific challenge. So let's recap. We want to listen to the others, but we're not quite there yet. Step by step, we're improving the sensitivity of our detectors, which are our microphones for this kind of sound. Within a few years, we will begin to listen to these wild animals of outer space. And when we launch LISA, we will get the strangest and loudest gravitational wave sounds ever. With LISA, we will listen to the collisions and merging of giant black holes. Already we can create these events in our supercomputers by solving Einstein's equation these simulations will be compared with the data, and we'll learn a lot. We'll read off the masses of the holes, how strong the waves are, and even exactly how far away they are. In their last few orbits, and in the final moment, Two black holes emit energy faster than everything else in the universe together. They're the most luminous systems we know. And here, we illustrate a giant black hole with a smaller black hole in orbit around it. With Lisa, we will listen to the dying moments of this smaller black hole as it's being eaten by the giant one, because this kind of merger takes much, much longer. We get much more information, and we can use it to test Einstein's theory with unprecedented precision. What we're hearing now is a year of expected Lisa data compressed to a minute in order to raise the pitch of the signal into the audible range. This music of the spheres isn't very musical, but its complexity contains huge amounts of information about the orbit and the central black hole. And the most important part of the signal is about to happen. It stopped. It stops suddenly because the orbiting black hole falls in to the big one, across the event horizon. The silence is the proof that there was a central black hole there. But this is actually much more than that. It's data will sound something like this, with those chirps and with the background 
of all the binary systems in our galaxy. This, this is a gravitational way of symphony. It'll include the mergers of distant black holes. Black holes so far away, the way it's been traveling for 95% of the time since the Big Bang. Wild animals of the universe roar all the time and from all around us. And this, coming up, is what we expect to hear when eventually we can listen to the very beginning of the universe, the Big Bang. Are you disappointed? Did you expect a loud bang? Just remember, this event was 14 billion years ago, and therefore the sounds we hear have been emitted by an event 14 billion light years away. Uh, it's quiet. But the details of the spectrum of this noise contains our most direct information about the Big Bang. Listening to this hiss will be the ultimate prize of gravitational wave astronomy. 